Admiral's log. The echoes of battle still reverberate in my mind. A haunting refrain that serves as a grim reminder of the cost of war. The Italian fleet, once a fearsome specter on the horizon, now lies broken and scattered beneath the waves, its ambitions shattered by the indomitable spirit of our sailors. But victory, as sweet as it may be, comes at a heavy price. Fifteen of our finest warships now rest at the bottom of the sea, their hulls torn asunder by the fury of battle, their crews lost to the depths. Each loss weighs heavily upon my heart, a burden that I bear with a heavy heart, knowing that every soul sacrificed was a son or daughter of China, a hero in their own right. But even as we mourn the fallen, a new threat looms on the horizon, one that cannot be ignored or easily vanquished. The United States, emboldened by our losses, continues to send more ships into the region, their presence a constant reminder of the dangers that lie ahead. For now, the skirmishes have been just that, brief and bloody engagements that leave both sides battered and bruised, but no closer to victory. But we cannot afford to be complacent, cannot afford to underestimate the resolve of our adversaries. The battles to come will be fiercer, the stakes higher, and the risks greater than ever before. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate April Dreadnoughts. It has been a busy couple of months. I have fought off the Italian Navy and I gained 100,000 victory points. But I don't want to click next turn just yet. I first want to design a new couple of ships. Probably a heavy cruiser and potentially some more. Because the fleet did take a beating. I lost 15 ships and some of those were capital ships. Now the capitals that I have left are a couple of the older UFI class. We have the Enigma Hun. Um, a couple of these still need to get refit, come to think of it. Because I got a 1917 versions of that. So seeing as that's the latest, let's refit that. Um, but my heavy cruisers, they're particularly old. These guys are from 1910, 1914. That's the latest that I have. So let's design a new heavy cruiser. At this point, I have a couple of different hulls available. I got the large armored cruiser. I have the semi-armored cruiser and the armored cruiser. Um, I want to have these things be fairly numerous while not really breaking the bank. These things cost me about 51 million for, let's say, about 10,000 tons of displacement. So I'm willing to go to, let's say, 11. Um, and that means I'm, I'm really running the minimum on this ship. I want these things to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other ships. Uh, literally. Yeah, let's see. This semi-armored cruiser. Oh, it's that weird thing. Hmm. Well, this was the medium cruiser. What the hell is that? No, I'll take the armored cruiser number five. This is fine. Okay, so 11,000 tons. It doesn't have to be terribly big. Um, it doesn't have to be terribly quick either. I think 24 knots is fine. As for firepower, the 10 inchers so far has served me very well. Able to deal with most different types of threats. And I do like that versatility, especially on these ships. Let's give them oil, basically all the best gear again. Uh, balanced, auxiliary engine, better turning. Give them an unbalanced rudder to dodge torpedoes a little better. Because they will not get a warning about coming torpedoes. They simply don't have hydrophones anymore. Let's make these things tanky. They're already 52 million and that's without adding firepower and uh, armor. Lovely. Okay, the guns. We got the 10 inchers Mark III. We also got the 11 inchers Mark III. Shuffle this back a little bit. Let's see. Uh, give me a medium barbette. Oh, that's enormous. It does look like the ship can't house a whole lot of turrets. Like maybe three, and that's with shifting the superstructure back. Like that. Hmm. 
What am I going to give you? I'm definitely not going to give you quad guns because I don't really like those. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of firepower, but I think they look like shit. So we're not doing that. Their role is a generalist. And considering that the 9-inch is capable, it's not as capable as a 10-inch to be sure, but it fires faster. 56 seconds, 45 seconds, and that's with the quad setup. Uh, triple is 44 seconds versus 55 seconds. Now let's improve the reload. Let's give the turret rotation a buff. I'm afraid it's going to be a bit of a dull cruiser. It's not really going to be terribly special. It's not going to have any crazy features. Let's see. Three inches. I can't even fit three inches. Okay. I do want to have a couple of torpedo launchers on this ship. And this is to deal with battleships. If you caught the last battle that I did, those torpedo launchers came in helpful. Not as helpful as I would have liked, but they did help somewhat. Let's give these guys... Yeah, seven and a half kilometer range is fine. As for propellant, give them TNT 3. Reduce the flash fire chance as much as possible. Give me hefty barbettes. And give me two powder. 3% flash chance, that's better. There are 76 million. This is kind of the problem. They're starting to blossom. The, the, the price just goes up very quickly. They're 50% more expensive than the previous design, while only weighing 2,000 tons more. It's not that much. And arguably, when it comes to primary firepower, they have less. Like, yes, they have potentially more barrels. I got nine barrels versus eight, and that's including the six inches. But as it stands right now, I'm completely incapable of dealing with anything like a DD adequately. And I don't like that. Can I still hide a torpedo launcher somewhere? No, because the main tower is too big. Yeah, that's not a great spot. The torpedo launchers are very fragile and can be... No, well, they can be pretty easily destroyed. So that's definitely a concern that I have. Is this going to help me? Maybe a bit. Got aiming speed, but it's also another 3 million. Okay, give me a 9-inch belt. Give me 8 and 8. Look at that. We're almost at twice the price. Um, three, three, and three. Inner belt, another four inches. Okay, fine. Three inches. Two and a half. Two inches? There. Okay, perfectly balanced. I'm one ton shy, and I got a 0.1 displacement offset. Arguably, these things are going to be pretty boring, but for a heavy cruiser, I think boring is actually okay, because they're reliable. They're just very reliable. And give them HE capacity shells in case I cannot actually pen the enemy ship. Right, let's give them a standard ratio. Standard ratio here as well. Although for the secondaries, no. Let's go max HE. Standard shell size is fine. Reduce this to an AUX 1. Improve that to 4.8. There we go. Okay, that's the new heavy cruiser design. As for the new battleships, the one I've been running around with are the Enigma Huns. Let's see what else we get. Because there are more battleships available, like this hull. And that might be easier to use, this Dreadnought number 4. The Enigma Huns displaced 30,000 tons. Uh, the Auras displaced 26, 27. I can try and make a 35,000 ton battleship. Focused around... Ah, they're still 13 inches. Okay, never mind. As for DDs, the E46 class has proven to be a bit fragile. It has not really been doing that well. Especially that 1v1 duel that I did. That was pretty awful. I lost to another DD. And this ship only had one gun to defend itself with. So what I want to try and do is add more firepower to the ship, but that could be a little difficult. Because I don't really know where else to put it. And I did make them, yeah, I made them as cheap as possible. 
but you know a ship that survives is generally more efficient than one that dies because you're gonna have to replace it can we add a barbette of some flavor oh, that's a bit big it is going to limit the torpedo firing arc but that's fine I just want to get another 4 inch gun on there. Because these are. Oh, come on. They're 4 inch Mark IV. They're really good guns. Oh, you can't. Fine. Never mind. I'm going to design a new DD. Now, what can I do with this ship? Because I still have that tower problem. Like, the towers are too fat. That would mean I'm going to have to use this tower. Which is fine. Let's make it about, I don't know, 1800 tons? Yeah. Gives me a bit more room to play around with. As for speed, be 32 knots. It doesn't have to be excessive. It just has to be a ship that's capable of going in to, let's say, another destroyer and winning. And not having that happen again. And I might need these as a sort of harassing force for enemy transports. So they go into harm's way. Facing and fighting potential convoys. So range might be more required for this design. Let's put it like that. If I give them force boilers. Yeah, we're going now we're getting somewhere. Uh minus minus everything. 18,000 kilometers. Pretty good. Okay, they are still not terribly expensive, so I like that. We are going to change that though. Let's give them a coincidence rangefinder. Give him hydrophones and an RDF. I don't care about depth charges. Because submarines are no longer a factor. As for guns, I guess it's not possible to fit that on the bow. Mm. The primary goal is to deal with other destroyers. So being able to engage destroyers with a faster rotating turret might be beneficial. I think the four-incher especially looking at reload, sits very well there. So it's going to be the 4-inch there. And then we're going to have a nice trapeze. Hmm. See, this is potentially tricky. Good field of fire. Give me another barbette, like a small one. And then a torpedo launcher on the stern. Let's make it a quad. Increase the turret rotation speed. What's your turret rotation speed now? Nine and a half degrees per second. Excellent. Cordite, two powder. Make it a heavy shell. Um, torpedo launchers are fine. Let's give them 21 inch. They don't have to be enormous. Electric. Ship slightly overweight. Doesn't have to do with the torpedoes. Well, it has to do with torpedo size. Shells. Semi armor piercing shells might be do yeah, they might be well enough to deal with the DD and to deal with transports. So I think that's fine. Let's cut their range a bit. Safe weight somewhere and still put something on armor. If I reduce speed by one knot, that barely moves the needle. If I increase their size, yeah, that kind of helps. But Come on, down just a bit. There. 1800 tons. We got 9 tons available. If I go back to balanced boilers, I'm saving almost nothing. I cannot reduce their draft. I can reduce their hull bottoms, though. That's 40 tons. Okay, fine. Um, give me more main belt. Or fore belt, more aft belt. Basically, give these things some survivability. I'm not worried about deck. Because the chances of getting pent there are not that bad. Ship's fairly, fairly quick. 32 knots, 33, 34. Yeah, I like this. So, I have four 4-inch four guns, capable of spitting out a shell every just shy of 6 seconds. And that's not counting crew. And I have a couple of torpedoes in order to deal with, well, anything bigger. These are electric torpedoes, so very difficult to detect and more accurate than the standard ones. 
It also means that the DD is slightly at greater risk because it has to get closer. It's a risk I'm willing to take. Um, lacking a name, this is going to be the tie-on class. Again, if you want to have your ship named after you, you need to become a patron at the NCO rank or join the channel by clicking the join button right next to subscribe. And with that, you're going to be able to get your name in the game. Again, NCO rank. So I think that's the new destroyer and the new heavy cruiser. And um, well, for the battleship, I'm going to have to wait for some bigger guns. In that previous battle, I lost quite a few ships. So let's start a shipbuilding process. We have about 100,000 tons available because I'm probably building some ships and repairing a bunch more. Um, oh, we got a whole lot of these DDs ready. Oh, that's the E46 class. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, I might make these convoy hunters to some extent. Okay, fine. I don't have any power projection in the Philippine Sea. I don't need to have power projection there to cancel any attacks, but I can definitely go on the offensive in this region. Over here, I don't have any power projection either. So let's send at least one DD over there and potentially intercept some American convoys. The Germans... Again, I have no idea how I got all these points against the Germans, but it's fine. I like it. As for the invasions here... We're definitely going to need more tonnage. So let's get that tonnage built. 13,000 tons, I'll take five. And now we have a little bit left. Let's get a couple of those new gunboat DDs. I'll take six. Now we are still a little of a margin. That's fine. I don't mind having a margin because I will have to deal with unforeseen circumstances, such as potentially having ships come back for repairs. Now, in the last episode, I went to war, or rather, I had a massive battle with the Italians, and they started running with their tail tucked between their legs. Russia has joined the war against the Italians. Good luck, guys. Um, there are no ships that I want from them. Their battleships are all old. But, supposedly, you can now refit these guys. And I'm just shy of a battleship, so I'm going to take the Aradano and just see how that mechanic works. There are no provinces that I want. The additional money is nice to have. Uh, the Spanish. Yeah, sure. Let's go to an alliance with the Spanish. Ah, oh, there's a new 16,000 ton CA. Oh, and now I get the experimental heavy cruisers. Ah, uh, fine. Korea has defeated me. And gained full control of Northwest. Great. Okay. This is... Not moving? Wow. So yeah, I lost this bit of territory here. We're going to have to kick out the Koreans again. Fine, we'll just walk a couple of million men in from uh, Liaoding, or maybe here. Not my biggest concern right now. The Chinese ship... No, sorry, the new uh, ship that I just claimed. Let's have a look. Eridano, hello. It's costing me 11 million a month. It's one of those new Eridanos. From that, well, newer. <laughs> I mean, it's not the base class. But it's still a pretty old ship from 1911. Oh, okay, fine. I guess the refit mechanic is not in yet. I'm just going to mothball this thing and see if somebody wants to buy it. Because I'm not sailing around with a 1911 ship. I mean, I'm sailing around with some older ships. Yes, I know. It's just that I don't want to add another battleship to that line. Because a battleship, if it gets taken out, it is very valuable. I don't want to lose that. A little later, it is time for another round against the Americans. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of ships currently available. Most of them are tied up in the seemingly successful invasion of Korea. Um, we now have the battlecruiser Aura and the Lucas Weinman. It's an old ship. It's a 1910, you know, the ones that don't operate anymore. Against the battlecruiser Illinois of the Illinois class, armed with eight 14-inch guns. Yikes. Okay, she's fast at 28 knots. She displaces 26,000 tons, which is slightly more than I do. And I'm defending transports. This is going to be fun. Okay, America, let's see that battle cruiser of yours. What are we facing? That looks like a pretty modern ship. Pretty modern indeed. 
Second grade gun, so they got 14 inch mark 2. That could help me. I suspect that uh, they're first going to eliminate some transports because they're the easy, low hanging fruit. The chance to pen the aura, thankfully, isn't very good. Oh, the poor Locust is going to have to work very, very hard at this. Yep, there goes the transports. Come on, Aura. Do your babysitting duties. Save the transports. Think of the children. But mostly think of the transports. Um, yeah, actually, I agree with the assessment of the Aura here. I'm going to eliminate the secondary ships first. And hope that the Aura doesn't take a couple of broadsides from that battlecruiser of theirs. So let's turn back slightly. Torpedoes can range at 5.8. I'm going to hold those in reserve. Aura has what? Sides? One side. And bow stern. Yeah, okay, fine. We need to eliminate these guys first. These and those DDs over there. Because that's a torpedo briefcase on a ship. And I don't like it. Accuracy is really good. 50%? Nice. What are you targeting? Definitely my battlecruiser. Could you kindly not? Accuracy is... Uh... <laughs> Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. Yes, please. 5,000 points of damage with a bit of HE. Now you're catching on. Alright. So that's one CL mostly out of commission. But we're going to keep firing at it until it's properly done for. The problem with the Aura class is its bow turret. It's also a semi-submarine. Uh, the bow turret seems to be a bit limited in firing arc. But so far we're making it work. As for the Lucas. Well, you're in for a rough time. Uh, let's go and engage that destroyer coming in. Chance of you to pen. That battlecruiser is going to make mincemeat out of that heavy cruiser. But it's not interested at the moment. That's good. Okay, we'll come back for that CL later. I know I said I wanted to kill it first, but right now I think we might need to do a little bit about this heavy warship that is coming in. Lucas, continue on your turn. Expect torpedoes. Expect disaster. Uh, aura, HE is fine. Because at this angle, you'll never pen that. Accuracy 30%, not bad for first salvo. Langley is launching torpedoes at the transport. So is Tucson. What kind of armor you got? Oh, it's not even that much. That could be a weak spot. Could be a weak spot. Oh, these transports are going to be dead. Now, my HE likely won't do a whole lot of damage against an angled ship like this. Many bulkheads, standard crew quarters, so crew elimination is not likely. Bow belt, 3-8. Well, we're finding at 5. Maybe I can pen their bow belt with HE. It's not unheard of. They can definitely start penning my stern. That's better. There goes another. Plenty of torpedoes traveling all over the place. I mean, these transports were gone the moment that the whole fleet spawned in. Because I cannot defend this many transports with two ships. So my objective here is to make the Americans bleed ships. Just lose ships. That's the core. If I can keep some transports alive, fantastic. But if not, well, we'll live. Oh. More torps coming in. At least they're firing the torps at me. Not on my transports. Aura, how are you doing? You bloodied their noses a bit. Ooh! -ho 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 -ho. I wasn't expecting you to pen their stern, but I'll take it happily. That's good damage. Do it again. What's your reload? 51 seconds. And yours? 54. Boink, boink. Can I pen this? I don't know, maybe. 
That was barely anything. Let's make the next salvo AP. This thing also packs torps, but considering the... Yeah, port starboards. All right. Do I dare risk going a little broadside? Not really. So I'm far too can... Oh! Well, that answers that. All my torpedo launchers have been destroyed. Good hit! Good hit, right through the nose. Fantastic. Okay, kill this DD. The other guy should be flooding. Gone. Okay, I don't need to worry about the torpedo launchers in the aura anymore, that's for sure. I think Illinois is done. Hold on, did you pump your turrets? Yeah, your turrets are gone. Well, that's one battle cruiser down. 162 million in the big drain. Now we eliminate the H, no, the CLs, the Langley over here. Bow armor, 1.6, no, 1.1. There goes the Parsons, well done to the Lucas. Lucas has done 9,000 points of damage. Good performance, Lucas. The Aura has done 54k, but then again, she has slightly bigger guns. Let's wrap this up. I wonder how many more fleets the Americans have over. Holy shit. Have over here. Jesus. 2,000 damage. That was a lot of damage. 26k and 12k. Sorry, 28k. He did torpedo my ship at some point. There it is. Boom. 23. Tucson is down. That leaves just the crippled Milwaukee. So let's finish that up and save, what, two transports? Okay, fine. We're going to save one transport. I see how it is. Let's wrap these guys up. Aura did amazingly well. Damage done versus damage taken. Just that these numbers don't really add up anymore, do they? I mean, if you do 34, or sorry, 28,000 points of damage against a light cruiser, just like that. Hmm. It means I don't really trust the numbers anymore. One transport saved. Yikes. Now, the reason why I kept Milwaukee alive is because her chances of dealing a whole lot of damage, I expected not to be that great. And then she just proceeded to engage a bunch of my transports. Which sucked, but okay. I should have seen that coming. I thought, well, they got two damaged engines, they're half flooded. They're not that likely to be able to deal a whole lot of damage anymore. Uh, and they're too slow to walk away. Well, yes, they are too slow to walk away, but they're definitely dealing damage. Aura, turn to port. So far, I'm very happy with the performance of these classes of battlecruisers. This class has done very well. If only you could, like, wrap this thing up. Wow. Where's my accuracy, dude? That's more like it. Gone. Okay, saved one whole transport, but hey, I killed a battlecruiser. That's good. The Americans are not particularly appreciative of the fact that I just kicked their ass. Um, I'm not quite done with them yet. They have more ships. They also... Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho. Yes, they have more ships. And they're here, defending Manila. Oh, boy. What do we have? We got the Enigma Hana Core Driver, we got the very old Antonio, and we got the very old Martin Kunze. Yikes. Against the main, the Legend and Constellation, and a whole bunch more. Alright, gentlemen, wrap up for the next battle. Get ready, get some snacks, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.